Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of no map, no portals mode. This will be an introduction to those of you who've never done this mode before. I'm going to try and make it more approachable for you because it's really, really fun. Let's start with the very basics. Well, no map mode simple. I'm pressing M, nothing's happening. And my UI is on, it literally disables the minimap. But why would you do that? Well, you see, most Valheim players develop a very unfortunate habit of just habitually pressing M all the time. This actually breaks our immersion, and it makes the game less enjoyable. Because which do you think is more fun for your brain? Staring at this map, or actually looking at the beautiful visuals and learning where they are? When you play this, you're playing a less enjoyable game. And the other thing that maps do, which is really unfortunate, I always know exactly where my character is. And this is a big problem. And here's the reality. Without the threat of getting lost, the Valheim world is small. It doesn't matter how big it is, how expansive it is, unless you feel scared of getting lost, it can't feel big. This is why no map mode makes the game more immersive, because instead of playing the 2D UI, you play the actual 3D game. You learn the stuff by heart where it is. It's the difference between knowing where something is with your GPS and being able to walk there. Now let's cover some more basics of surviving no map, no portal mode. The first thing to keep in mind is that you're gonna get lost, right? That's a constant threat, and you getting lost could mean you losing all your stuff and not being able to get it back. So it's really important you avoid getting lost. As soon as you possibly can, find a coast. Because you, you don't want to be in the center of any kind of landmass in no map mode. Seriously, that's, that's how you get lost, that's how you waste hours and hours and hours of time. Only travel along the coastlines. Anytime you go away from the coast, if you can't see the coastline, you are in danger of getting lost and never being able to find your stuff again. So, always travel along the coasts. That being said, there are ways that you can go inland, but you need to take precautions so that you're able to retrieve your stuff should you die. And the easiest way to do that is to just use the hoe. You could use the paven option, but I find it's easier to use level ground because it's basically just a bigger path, see? And all you have to do is just, every now and then as you're walking along, use the hoe and make this path. This is going to enable you to find the path because you're creating a landmark. And that way, you'll be able to find where you die because you can just follow this path. Another method you can use to make sure that you don't get lost is to treat the edges of biomes like coastlines because they're similar. I can find the coastline and I can find the edge. There's basically a hidden path here, right? Because there's the meadows on the left and the black forest on the right. So that means that as long as we stay on the edge of these two biomes, and the easiest way to see where the edge is, is to actually look at the terrain. You see how this is black forest terrain and this is meadows terrain. So the edge is right here and try and travel as close to the edge as possible. And you can even see how the trees change, right? Black forest tree, meadow tree. The edge is right there. Another very helpful tip is to memorize the world tree. The world tree actually comes up from one side and then goes over. It, the tree comes up from the horizon and then it goes across the sky and drapes that way. So that over there where I'm looking right now is the east. And then the branches of this structure point towards the west. The world tree is always oriented in the same direction. And this means that as long as you can catch a glimpse of it and you've learned where it's oriented, this is gonna help you from getting lost in nomad mode. The next tip is to make sure that you don't abandon all of the stuff at your bases. 
Every time you make a base, that base still has value. Don't gut it when you move to the next one. That way, if you end up dying and getting sent back to the center of the world for some unforgivable reason, then you can still use the base as a place to save, cook, get some food, and make it back to where you came from. And not only that, but sometimes, especially as you progress into the swamp and other biomes, you're gonna need to come back here to get blood bags and iron and various things, even throughout the rest of the game. So instead of gutting them every time you move to the next one, consider recollecting everything and actually making a new base from scratch each time. Trust me, you won't regret it. The next tips are all about utilizing the longboat because this is your portal replacer. This is how you move entire bases worth of stuff. But before we get into that, there's some basic rules that you need to understand about sailing in no map mode. The most important rule to remember is do not leave for a sailing voyage if it is rainy. So if you and your friend want to go out on this adventure, but it's raining, and you think it's a good idea to just hop in your boat because the wind's in the favor, don't do it. Seriously, you're going to die. Okay? Don't do it. Only sail when it's clear. And when you have the wind at your back. If you have the wind going against you, you're going to get turned around. You're sailing, and you're happy, because you know where you're going, and then boom, look at that, a serpent. Your chance to get serpent meat. Wrong. Your chance to get lost. If you fight this thing, you're going to forget where you're going, and look around you. If you try and fight this serpent, you're going to have to turn, and then you're going to lose track of where you're going, especially if the wind changes direction. So always keep that in mind. When you choose to engage a serpent, you're going to lose track of where you're going. Now I'll show you how you can transport huge quantities of goods using the longboat filled with carts. It's not actually as simple as it looks. There's nuance to this and rules because it may look like this works, but when you sail stuff around, it's really challenging. You can only do this if there's only one player. This is because the cart's location gets all screwy when another player's nearby. So if you want to do this when you're doing multiplayer, you need to load the carts up onto the longboat and then leave and be away from the other player. And then they can take their own longboat and load it up with carts. And then it'll work fine. But if you're on the same boat or you're near each other, the carts are going to gyrate and destroy everything. The process of loading the cart onto the longship is quite simple once you get the hang of it. You'll need to bring the longship somewhere where it's a little bit shallow, but not too shallow. This is perfect. Then all you need to do is have a little bit of wood, build a workbench, and build a couple of these stairs. We're basically going to make a loader to get the cart onto the boat. I find that it's easiest to use two stairs just like this. Sometimes the cart will flip. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. The process is kind of nitpicky here, because you can't just run up on top because you get stuck. So you have to run up here and then do this sort of switcheroo where you go backwards like that. And then you just dump the cart on and then hopefully it works. Sometimes weird stuff happens, but it usually ends up on the boat somehow. The cart flipping doesn't really matter because you can still move it around. And these things are going to get damaged a lot. So you're going to need to be able to bring your hammer out and repair the carts. That's the main benefit to them. They're repairable cargo crates. Also, there are absolutely limitations for how many carts you can realistically sail on the boat. Heavier carts will require more finagling. As you can see, this cart is approaching 2,000 pounds. I recommend you don't put more than 2,000 pounds in a cart. They become really hard to navigate. As you can see, it's really easy with heavy carts to get sort of stuck, and then you'll have to let go of the cart if your cart's really heavy, you won't be able to make it up this loader. So you'll actually have to build the loader wider in order to accommodate heavier carts. This is because heavy carts can't go up the stairs very well. You have to sort of go diagonally like that. And then you can do the same trick where you push it up forward and then you just YOLO over the edge and the cart's in the boat. Now, when you put the carts on the boat, you really don't want them piled on top of each other like this. That's going to cause some problems. So mess with them until they're not on top of each other anymore. But as you can see, I'm sailing, right? And I'm at full speed. 
but this is as fast as I go. Because unlike metal in the boat, weight of the carts does actually slow your sailing speed down just by loading it up with really heavy carts. So there's some finesse to this, as you can see. You don't really want to do this in stormy weather because it's totally possible for the carts to get flung off the boat. And you don't want that when your whole life savings are in them. And don't get me wrong, I understand the convenience of portals. But here's the thing. What I found in Valheim is a lot of the actual joy, the fun, the thrills, those unforgettable moments, come from being with somebody else, where you are going somewhere, and there is something you have to protect. Some treasure, some metal, something you're holding. And portals totally eliminate this from the entire game. It removes a huge part of the gameplay loop that makes it more satisfying. And don't get me wrong, I started with portals. I understand that portals are convenient. Try playing without portals, and the uh, it's just amazing. You get to have so many more experiences that you just don't get with portals. Portals eliminate part of the game, and you don't even know about this part of the game because you play with portals. As you can see here, I got a fleet of these ships, and they have ungodly amounts of, of loot on them, right? I mean, you see all these carts? This is something you're gonna learn to do in no portals mode, because you have to sort of take everything you need each time you migrate to a new base. So all of this stuff you see is all the stuff I needed to go to our next base and start building our Mistlands area. Ooh. So as you can see, there are ways to make this work. Now, it's true that I've been suggesting that maps break immersion, but that doesn't mean that maps are totally useless. After all, I mean, think about actual Vikings. Do you think they took their longships out into the ocean with no sense of where they were going? Absolutely not. That is pure suicide. And the same is true in Valheim. So this is why, even though I encourage you to use no map mode, I also encourage you to plan expeditions with maps. So basically, you sit down and you plan your expedition, and then you play, and you know sort of where you're going, and you can maybe, if you want to, reference this map, but here's the difference. You don't know where you are, right? Like, where am I on this map? I can tell you. I'm actually right here. I know that because I know where I am, right? Four, you could press M, and you would know exactly where you were at every moment, because it shows you. Whereas here, I don't know where my character is. And this is awesome, because it makes using the map actually feel more like a map. And I actually suggest that you use this tool to plan out your expeditions. So in the beginning of the game, you don't really need to do that that much because you just, you know, need to get the basics, you need to progress through the meadows and the black forest. But later on, it can be really, really fun to find areas using this map that have a lot of different edges of different biomes. When you make a base, that is on the edge of multiple different biomes. And the monsters from all these different biomes, especially at night, they spawn and they fight each other. And it's really awesome. And here's an example of what we're doing. So we just started building the, the big perimeter wall, which is basically this inner area. And it doesn't look like much here, but what's very special about this is this part is in the plains. This part, is in the Mistlands. And then this part is in the Black Forest. The raids here are so manageable because every time you get a raid, you just take the monsters to that pack of locks over there. And if you get raided by goblins, then you just take them into the Mistlands or to the trolls in the Black Forest. There's always options to have the monsters fight each other and it makes building so much easier. As you can see, there's constantly monsters fighting. So when you do build, you have to plan things out a lot. And what I like doing is setting up these sort of little, I call them citadels or hearts. And you basically dig into a mountain and then you make a little safe zone. 
So no matter what, you come here and the monsters can't get you. Nothing can get in here, even during a raid. And you can repair your stuff and have some food. And then from the safety of here, you go out into the danger. And then you start working on the bigger building projects. And that's really, oh, it's been such a blast. But now that we're talking about all this, why do people even do it? You might ask. I mean, what's wrong with using the map and using the portals? Well, nothing. By using portals and using the map makes the game progress through itself much faster. So you basically get to the end and you get to the part where you feel like there's nothing left to do much faster. If you want the sort of longest possible Valheim experience where you're in a world that feels really epic because everything that happens took time to happen, when I play Valheim, it inspires me. I get to practice creativity that I didn't even know I had. Valheim is worth investing in. It's worth being one of those games that you just do stuff the long way because you will be rewarded. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my guide on how to play no map, no portals mode. It's really, really enjoyable, especially if you've done a Valheim playthrough before and you've been thinking about doing a new one. Well, this is one great way to do it. And if you want to support my work, I encourage you to get a dedicated server using my tutorial and affiliate link. You'll be able to set it up for around 15 to 20 dollars or euros per month. And you'll really only need to do this for two or three months because people tend to lose interest. Groups of Valheim players stop at that point most of the time. That using dedicated servers this way is a great way to play Valheim because it enables your friends and other people to log on to the server instead of it just being your server. This makes the game more interesting and it can be a really great way to play no map, no portals mode. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and if you want any kind of tutorial, just comment below. Let me know. I love making tutorials and I really enjoy when you guys participate in these polls. I really pay attention to these so engage with them and that's what videos you'll get, right? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!